On this week's episode of the Fearlessly Curious podcast, I want to share with you some contemplations and personal discoveries I have around the topic of judgment, because I know this comes up a lot and it's something we all live with. You know, some people shame judgment, some people think it's good, some people think it's bad, some people try to not be judgy, but I, I believe judgment is part and parcel of being a human being. And I think the most important thing about judgment is to have an awareness around it, to have an awareness whether or not our judgments are keeping us from seeing the best in people, whether our judgments are closing us off to the best opportunities. This is what's important to me about judgment. So I'd like to explore that today. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is this really amazing quote that I've come across, and it goes something like this. So I'm going to set the tone for you, set the space. I really want you to just take a moment to be with me present right now, whether you're in the car listening to this, sitting in traffic, or maybe you're in busy traffic right now. I just want you to be present in the moment. Pay attention to where you are, obviously. But just really take these words in. I am not who you think I am. You are who you think I am. I'm going to say that again. I am not who you think I am. You are who you think I am. To me, this speaks to the essence of judgment, that every opinion, point of view that we have about a person or a situation is a mere reflection of who we are. It has nothing to do with that person because we can never know what that other person is going through, right? So we're looking at the world, we're experiencing the world, through the lens of our own experiences. So whatever opinions, whatever judgments we hold come from our own experiences. So I'll say it again. I am not who you think I am. Whatever it is you're listening right now, whatever opinions and judgments you have about what I'm saying isn't actually, has, doesn't have anything to do with me. I am not who you think I am. All the opinions that you hold right now based on what you're seeing in the video podcast, what I'm wearing, the color of my hair, the way my body gestures, those of you listening, the tone of my voice, the tonality, the style that I speak in, whatever judgments you may have, says nothing about me. I am not who you think I am. You are who you think I am. I'm literally a mirror for every experience that you've ever had creating this perception of me. This is a game changer for me. And, you know, I don't expect you to understand this immediately. And that's not implying that you don't have the capacity. What I mean is that when we're so used to thinking and seeing the world and behaving a certain way, when we're offered a different perspective, it's really important to give yourself, as I constantly give myself the space, not to overthink an idea, but to consider it, to receive it, to let it percolate like the best coffee. So when I discovered this quote, it really, really threw me into disarray, right? I was a little bit discombobulated because it, it's, it flipped the perspective on everything I've ever believed in. So suddenly everything I think about other people actually has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with me. So whenever I made a, I'm just going to say a negative judgment of someone or something, I would remind myself that that negative judgment is a reflection of me. So if I think someone is looking terrible, then that is a reflection of how I perceive terrible to look like. Does that make sense? And I'm not saying it's bad or good. This has got nothing to do with being bad or good. This has simply got to do with perception and identity. And the most crucial part of this, at least for my own personal learning is that it gave me the opportunity to view life with more compassion, to be more mindful about the words that I use to describe a situation. When I see someone as angry, frustrated, irritable, unkind, the only reason why I can call them these things, identify with these words, label them, is because I identify with them. It's because I myself have experienced it. I have lived it myself. 
So that's not to say that I can't judge people. Of course, we judge all the time. My point is that when we go deeper, we can use judgment as a bridge to living with more compassion, more tenderness, more kindness, and a lot more love. So from now on, every time, as I mentioned, I have a negative thought, something that is less than kind. I don't beat myself up for having that judgment, but I allow that to reflect back to me. And as it reflects back to me, I think about how I can be kinder in that moment. So I was doing a little bit of research on this and that statement, the quote, I am not who you think I am. You are who you think I, I am. I believe originates from Buddha. But I'm also finding online a, an extended version of that quote from a man called Charles Cooley. And this is what he says. I am not what I think I am. And I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. So I'm not going to deep dive into that because that takes it to a whole other level. But what inspired me to talk about judgment today, first of all, is to be curious about the way we think and why we think that and how it relates to the way we interact with the world. And more importantly, how our curiosity can always lead us to a path of compassion. The world and life is hard enough as it is. It doesn't have to be. There is always space for kindness and compassion. And I'm always looking for the opportunities to invite more kindness and compassion in. Even in my own personal journey with this, I pendulum swing between, I pendulate between being over kind and maybe leaning into a little bit of posit positive, toxic positivity where I'm always looking for the bright side, always looking for the good in people. What's really important is to have discernment that's broad where we can own the negative labels. We can be logical about it. We can name a situation and say that was terrible behavior. It is, right? Stealing is not a, an acceptable behavior. That doesn't change, but it also doesn't mean that I can't be compassionate. And I know that whenever we reflect any experience or perception or belief that we have of our external world back to ourselves, there always opens up an opportunity to soften. Judgment. So I mentioned what inspired today's episode. Somebody sent me a message on Facebook. So I had been navigating burnout, a terrible burnout. My, my depression has been looming. I'm in a chapter of my life that is particularly trying right now. And I'm also leaning in to showing up this way, not retreating entirely and not hiding it, being fully transparent because that's important. And that is what I champion. I advocate for fearless authenticity. And authenticity means showing up exactly as I am. It doesn't mean airing my dirty laundry. It doesn't mean victimizing myself. It simply means showing up in honest truth. And as a client had mentioned, I love the way she used these words, I don't need to be economical with my truth. And I don't want to be economical with my truth either. So as I've been navigating burnout, I've been sharing that more and more on my socials. Some of you may see it, some of you may not see it. And who follows me wrote me a message along, basically along these lines. And they, they said to me, in fact, let me go, and, let me go and, I'm going to go and look for it right now so that I don't misquote them. I will keep the identity confidential as a sign of respect. But let me just look this up right now. It came through on Facebook book. Let me see what account they messaged me through. How do I do this? No. Bear with me while I do this. Let's see what they said. 
the interesting thing is that when I first read the message, it really triggered me. I felt, I felt I was being judged. Well, probably because I was being judged, but it triggered me into a full defense mode. I just wanted to retaliate. I wanted, I was reactionary. And I'm going to read this word for word. And please note, right, this is the thing about writing messages is that it's going to come from my tone. I don't know what tone this person took. So I'm, you're going to hear it from the tone that I'm receiving it. Hi, sir. Melissa, that's my nickname. Just read your latest post about that hard pill to swallow. That's re referring to a post I wrote. That was the title of the post. Well, I can't say that I understand what you're going through, but I sure hope and pray you find your way through it. So at that point, I felt a lot of love and support. You're definitely blessed. At that point, I couldn't agree with this person more than that. Then they continue. However, what questions me is that you have wealth way, lots of wise there, beyond what we normal people have. I go, inverted commas, or air quotes, sigh, and then this emoji of like this meh face, in envy each time I see you riding at the equestrian polo club. Riding a horse and playing polo has always been a childhood dream and I will very likely remain a dream from the looks of it. Close bracket. He continues. Anyway, yeah, for someone who can have anything she can buy, why do you have those sadness in you? I sincerely hope you overcome everything, Sal. So beautifully written, that message, right? It started with love and support. And then they leaned into their curiosity. But their curiosity also reveals a truckload of judgment, right? And subjective perspective, perspective and perception. So they say, what questions means that you have wealth way beyond what we normal people have. Now, this is all about context because what is normal? In my world, of course, I, I see wealth. I have wealth because of how I perceive it. I, I have food on my table every day. I have a roof over my head. My health is good and I feel safe. That to me is wealth. Those are my values for wealth. But for other people, wealth is having a hundred million in the bank account, right? It's something that they want to quantify, but wealth for me is about quality. So already this person is judging me based on their scale of what wealth is and saying that I am not normal compared to them. But he's being really honest about it. He's being super open, which I love and I admire. And then he says, I go sigh in envy. Now, what a massive proclamation to make. I'm not sure many people out there would admit to envy or, or jealousy and I softened again as I read that. Each time I see you riding at the polo club and it's always been a childhood dream. So, you know, you don't have to have a huge amount of money. And again, what does huge amount of money mean, right? I could be riding because that's sponsored, which actually they're not my horses that I'm riding, not that I need to justify it. But again, we don't know why people are living the way they are, how they are living the way they are. We create a narrative around how we perceive people, and that narrative is created based on our own lived experience. So if I see myself as normal, anything that I, I'm making an assumption on that is different to me becomes not normal. This could have been a really abrasive message, but instead, because this incredible person lent in, leaned in with curiosity, and it was a childlike curiosity, also exposing and being so open about their own views. It left me with no other option other than to be curious and compassionate too. I could have been completely triggered. I was initially, but the languaging and the approach, as I mentioned with curiosity, just allowed me to drop into that compassionate space. This is an absolute model of what fearless curiosity can create between two people on a topic that essentially is very subjective, wealth. He started with good wishes and ended with good wishes. 
And I'd like to share with you my response. So I, I responded by saying, thank you so much for your message. There is zero correlation between wealth and sadness. Because essentially, the post I was referring to, that they were referring to, was my burnout and borderline depression that I've been navigating and continue to be navigating. And what they couldn't understand is I have all the wealth in the world from how they perceive me. How could there even be space for sadness? And so my response, there is zero correlation between wealth and sadness, at least in my world. I don't know if there's research on this or there's data, but honestly speaking, for me, even if there was research and data, that's historical. It's always an average. It's never an absolute. So the best thing I could do was be honest in response to this incredible person. I continued, you do not know the path I have walked in life, the adversity that I have experienced. And this has nothing to do with financial wealth. And this speaks to a topic that I covered in a previous episode on comparison. It's totally natural for us to have a narrative, have a perception of who we are. And then when we perceive the world and other people, we make that comparison and we form an opinion and a judgment based on that comparison. It doesn't mean that it's completely true because we never really know what someone is going through and we will never know. Even when someone relates to me what their experience is, I'm interpreting their experience. I could never truly know how it feels. I could never truly understand even what they're going to going through. I can connect with the feeling by being present with them, by observing them, by making the conversation about them. Because when I'm listening, I want to open my heart and be present for them. I, it is about them. It's not about me. I then finished my message and I said, I appreciate your kindness and your curiosity because I truly do. And perhaps I will make a podcast about this topic. So I'm going to send, when this podcast goes out, I'm going to send a link to this incredible person and so that they can see that I followed through on that because I think the behavior that they've modeled is beautiful. I admire it. It gave me an opportunity to lean in as well and notice my own patterns, like how I wanted to, initially I was reactive and defensive, but he displayed so much kindness and calm and compassion that it gave, he gave me no option other than also no other option other than to sorry reciprocate with the same kindness and compassion and be curious too so i am not who you think i am you are who you think i am and i, I could talk for days months and years about judgment and identity and perspective and perception I guess my point today is to say any time that you are judging a person, an experience or a situation, always lean into that curiosity, just as this person did when they messaged me. He had a judgment, but he also asked. He wanted to know more. He wanted to discover a little bit more about me. Um. And he didn't even ask me a direct question. It came from a place of just sharing where he was coming from. He didn't understand something. And the curiosity created, at least from my perspective, a beautiful connection and has inspired a topic for me to communicate on this podcast with all of you. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are on judgment and how judgment might curtail, might hinder you from having stronger connections with people, might prevent you from tenderness for inviting more love and compassion into your life. I'd also love to know if after listening to this, you are curious to flip the switch on judgment. I encourage you and I invite you to try to perceive judgment in a different way, to invite more space and a pause when you are judging, just pause and ask yourself, now how does this judgment, this opinion 
live in me because I can only see it. I can only name it because it lives within me at some level. And I'll leave it there for now. As always, it's such a privilege to be able to kind of chat with you here. And your feedback means the world to me. I hope that you will subscribe, continue to follow and share this podcast to all your friends and family and people who matter to you. Because this isn't for me, I created this for you. Head on over to melissaindot.com slash podcast to get the transcript. You know, when we receive information from an audio perspective, when we're listening, it's very different to when we're reading. And of course, follow me on my socials, engage with me, ask me questions. I'm best when I'm responding to you. Until the next episode, I hope that you can have some fun being curious with your judgment going forward. And I have hope that you will also have more stories of compassion through your curiosity to share not just with me, but with the people that you care about in this incredible world that we live in. Until next time, stay fearlessly curious.